Hi, and welcome to uh, the CIBD Central London events that we've got coming up. And we're just launching our events for autumn 2023. And we're absolutely delighted to have Natal Dank, who's going to be our guest. Um, when we put together our agenda for the whole year, we really sort of set out a dream list of guests that we would love to have on, that we feel that our CIBD members would get so much value from it. Um, and Natal was right at the very top of this. Natal's a, a real pioneer in her field and has really sort of brought to life the whole subject of Agile HR in a really practical way. Um, so Natal works both as a consultant, has got an extensive experience working both inside and outside of organisations, across sectors, across different organisations, different cultures and countries as well. So in this session that's coming up, she's going to be really sharing her insights and expertise in a really practical way about how you might want to consider having Agile HR in your organisation, or if you're already doing it, maybe helping you define it and helping it have even more impact. So we're absolutely delighted. And so for the next 25 minutes or so, uh, Natal and I are going to have a really good conversation, just to understand it in a little bit more detail as a build up to the, the actual session. The session's free. You can get tickets on Eventbrite and that is in the link uh, below, which is coming up now. So we'd love to see you there. <laughs> so, so thank you, Natal. It, uh, it feels really strange to actually interview you because I've seen you on so many different podcasts and different YouTube videos as well. So it's great to have it. But for those that don't know you, could you just give a little bit of an introduction in terms of like your background and, and what brought you into Agile HR, please? So hello, my name is Natal and uh, my background is that I am an Aussie that has, that finds herself in Scotland uh, for the weather. Uh, and then I mix that up with uh, working very closely with HR leaders and teams around how do they understand what this concept of business agility is? How do they start to bring that into their ways of working to, to revolutionize their own results, but really kind of help wider organizations start to evolve and modernize and essentially kind of respond to this big complex uh, business environment that we have around it. So we'll talk a bit about that. Um, so my background is years uh, in people roles, uh, such as everyone that would be watching this. And about 10 years ago, I kind of lost my way. I felt like HR had become process before people. And I, I always talk about at the time I was using a 25 box matrix to assess talent because uh, you can never have too many boxes. And I kind of lost my way and I went looking for some answers and it I kind of went into consulting and I was just really fortunate to start um, to do a big engagement with a very agile organization. So there were a big a startup that was now very big and successful. And I was challenged from the word go to apply this more agile way of working. And it it just really changed my life. And it gave, and I realized that there was ways of working that could solve a lot of the problems that we were facing in HR. Things about how do we work more evidence-based? How do we, you know, before we implement something, how do we know that this is going to fix the problem? This is going to be valuable. And how do we co-create solutions rather than implement them onto people? Um, so following this engagement, I never looked back and I started to I started to practice Agile HR, um, but I also tried to take it to my profession. So I started meetups and various kind of movements and it slowly but surely really started to grow. And then uh, a couple of years ago, um, I co-wrote the Agile HR book, and that's been really popular. Um, and fortunately, people use it and they show me the post-it notes of using it. Um, and of course, I've just continued to kind of build that that practice and that community. And um, yeah, and now just work with such a big array of organizations that are, that are looking at taking these elements into how they work and to transform for the better. So, so that's me. That's my history. Brilliant. It's, it's never easy to condense such a uh, a wide career in such a short time, but thank you for that. Uh, and I'm really impressed about a 25 box <laughs> matrix, I think. Uh, most people are impressed by that. Um, so there, there feels like there's a real appetite. We're managing to get time with you between trips to the Nordics and Croatia and Japan. So it seems that there's a real appetite across the world for Agile. What is it about it that's really got people quite excited about it, do you feel? Well, it, there's two elements. Um, the, 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 the why is that we now live in an extremely complex, disrupted, uncertain world, and everyone is searching for ways to, to manage that, I suppose, to respond, to, to understand how do you navigate that complexity. And um, 
without knowing anything else about agility, the number one kind of definition is that it helps you solve complex problems. And complex problems are problems where the answers are unknown or they're multiple. And just by doing one thing, you start to change the nature of the problem itself. So complexity is that, you know, everything's interlinked and it's all kind of joins up together. And if you think about these organizational problems that we're facing, you know, upskilling, reskilling, skills gaps, the, the, you know, the AI coming into the workplace and totally changing our world, the concept of just digitalization and technological change. And then you add on that, you know, um, uh, government changes, pandemics, war, uh, you name it, we've all had it over the last, say, five years. Uh, and it's not slowing down. And so everyone's going, all right, the way that we've worked up until now doesn't seem to fit this new exact, this new environment. And so everyone's on the lookout for what are the answers. And Agile isn't the answer, but it gives you techniques to apply that helps you find the answers to these problems. Um, and if you, and also to be successful in this environment, if you want to take opportunities, if you want to kind of be a leading business, then you definitely have to embrace this more kind of innovative, experimental kind of um, test and learn approach. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to get left behind. So, um, so that's kind of the the crux of it. Is everyone's kind of, I, I think, not just HR, business in general is going. Okay, we've got to transform how we work because it's it just doesn't suit our environment anymore. I think I read actually that you know lots of surveys, but one recently there was a big survey of CEOs across the world, and um, you know over half of them said, we are definitely going to be changing our operating model in the next five years. Otherwise we won't be in business. And that's pretty substantial, isn't it? To, you know, used to go around, companies would probably have the, the same operating model for maybe their whole lifespan, but now everyone is trying to transform. So that's why it's such a big topic. Mm, and I guess there's, there's certain words that sort of enter lexicon that just like uh, and then everyone starts to use it and it kind of loses its meaning a little bit. And with Agile, particularly where it first came from, there's some principles that underpin it, aren't there? Do those do those principles that sort of uh, were part of its origin in software, are those being carried over into HR for Agile HR, are they? Yeah, definitely. And a good question. It's not a, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel here. What we're doing is we're taking a, a proven concept and actually a way of working that, um, is happening within the business. So it started in tech, but now you're starting to, you know, appreciate that it's going beyond tech and across all industries. Um, we're taking that and we're essentially translating it to our context. So what does it mean when we bring it in? So, um, you know, so agility is about putting your customer at the heart of everything that you do. And then you look at how do you incrementally, so that's slice by slice, piece by piece, deliver value through to that customer. Um, and that says, okay, to do that, we need all the skills in the team, you know, in that's required to deliver that value in the team to get the job done. And actually, if we have a great team, they're going to be faster if they're close to the customer and they can actually self-organize as much as possible to get that job done. So that's kind of the core premise. Um, and if you take that into the world of HR, that's really interesting because the customer is our people and our organization. We've got to define value. So how do we know what to go after and why? And how do you say, you know, say no to this thing, but focus on this thing? How do we break big complex problems down into very manageable chunks of work? And how do we work more multi-skilled and multifunctional to solve these problems? Because for HR, we've worked very siloed in the past, very functional, you know, we're all these functional topic owners or owning our own projects, having to get time from each other to get things done. So this is, okay, could we actually work more effectively if we all, you know, focus on one problem at a time use our multi-skilled, multifunctional approach, deliver value, test it, get the data that it works, and then keep delivering uh, and build it up over time rather than this sort of big bang, one size fits all change that often means we implement something that isn't really seen as valuable and liked once it's in there. So, so it's very similar, but it's about 
sort of translating it into our kind of our language, I suppose. Yeah. Wow. Because I guess the things that were sent out there, although, you know, it's, just, it is a, some, it's a support and it's a selection tool, but it's a real sort of mindset kind of paradigm shift, isn't it? Like mm. how we create value in the world, that we actually have customers and that we're there to serve them in a particular way. Um, do you find that that some HR teams do struggle to sort of do that kind of mindset shift? Definitely. <laughs> so um, so um, there's a couple of reasons. One is that, um, well, first of all, there's no use embracing agile unless you know the problem you're trying to solve. So a lot of people go, oh, we're going agile. And it's not about just going agile. It's about why, you know, so what problems are you trying to solve by by bringing in these changes to how you work? So first of all, decide, define why. Secondly, there's a legacy, isn't there, in HR processes and systems that do tend to represent a more traditional, top-down, kind of, you know, bureaucratic way of working. You know, the 25 box is a great example. It had good intentions. You know, the 25 box was five layers of, of performance and five layers of potential, you know, and suddenly you get 25 boxes. But did we test that? Did we validate that that was going to be useful? And, and why are we using this process? What is it for? You know, what's the value? So there's something about that a lot of the ways of working in a lot of organizations up until now have represented some of these traditional approaches to getting the job done, which is the very processes that we're trying to change by embracing agility. And, and HR represents a lot of those. We, we, we kind of own a lot of those processes and systems. So I think there's a constant tension where um, it's only natural to kind of go, oh, but this is how we've done it before or, um, you know, but how do we, you know, because we have to actually rethink the process. Maybe the process is not even needed and that's quite challenging, isn't it? So it puts us in a vulnerable position. So I think the reinvention of organizations is essentially the reinvention of HR at the same time, you know, hybrid working, all of this, this is a whole new world for us. You know, the future of work is here. Um, and then finally, and I think this is a bit more specific to HR, is that we have been these topic, uh, we come from a very functional point of view. So I developed my career, I was in learning and development, and that was my focus, or and then I was in talent, you know, or then I was in reward. Uh, and actually, the problems we're trying to solve need skills from all of those areas. But when we think of solutions, and when we think of our problems, we think from our to functional mindset. So the amount of, you know, if you, it, it's just the way, if you give the problem to the L&D team, it will probably get a learning solution. Is the learning solution what's needed? Not sure. So this is flipping that, you know, how do we actually interrogate the problem and fall in love with the problem, right? And then find out what the solution is. Um, and that's challenging because we, while all our expertise that we've sort of built up until now is still really valuable, we've got to also learn how to kind of, collaborate with other skills and combine them to get the best um, outcome for the business. And that's a new way of working. Yeah. Wow. It's, it sounds like an absolutely fascinating, almost like a life's work, isn't it? To really sort of grow this. And I guess that like there's so much ego invested in our processes and our place in the organization. And we're kind of, kind of throwing that all up in the air and like sort of saying, means and ends almost have to change almost. I guess um, we try to run really pragmatic sessions for people and we love like an example of things in action. Can you give us any examples of organizations that have kind of adopted and embraced Agile HR and kind of where they were and kind of where they ended up? And I, I can't imagine it's like a linear path, like you literally no. just, there, it's, <laughs> it's as much a learning process as anything, isn't it? Yeah, it is definitely. Um, Okay, I'll give you a couple of examples. I'll give you sort of one around kind of solving the problem. And then I'll give you a kind of example of a sort of um, a, a HR function over over time, uh, kind of evolving their ways of working. So the first one um, is a good old, you know, management development. So, um, you know, a, an organization was running two day 
management development programs. Everyone said they needed um, training or learning, uh, but no one would turn up or you know could find the time in their diary. Um, and so it was always this struggle, you know. And then then two days, everyone would go away and learn lots of things. But in that time, it was kind of like, what one thing will you go back and now implement, you know, um, to be a better manager? We've all been there. We know that that issue. So this team went, okay, what if we just uh, let go, let go of the idea that we must do the two day cohort, that we must have this kind of approach to learning. And let's just go and use concepts of design thinking in Agile to interrogate the problem. And what they found by spending time with managers and they use things like personas and um, yeah, human centered interviews, and they looked at various data and they found that managers always talked about everyday problems to solve. So, and they talked about it very much in the moment. So, oh my God, I've got to hire someone tomorrow and I, you know, for my team and I'm not sure how to do it. You know, I want to hire the best person. I want it to be a great fit, but how do I do that? Um, or, oh, I've got this big conversation tomorrow. I've got to give someone some pretty critical feedback, not sure how to do it. Now in our minds, we go, oh, send them to feedback training or send them to interview training. But for a manager that it doesn't, it just doesn't work that way. And so what they thought is, okay, how could we start to test small base solutions at that problem? So could we, when we know these a certain manager needs to hire, how could we get them a video, a coach, you know, maybe a 90 minute session, something to read, um, and that they could start accessing this learning based on the problem that they needed to solve then and there. And how do we maybe use some of the language that they're saying in this material so they they're more attracted to it and they think oh yes that that's what I need and so they just started to test at that level and then yes okay they started to get results around one problem such as the the interviewing and um, team building and then they moved on to some other problems and over time they started to build this sort of new ecosystem of management development um, what was interesting is that prior to this they thought, oh, maybe we should build some kind of digital ecosystem, you know, to kind of do management development. But again, that was starting with a solution. So instead, they just by spending time and answering the problem and then building it up, they actually got to a similar endpoint, but they had validated it as they went. And so they were using, um, you know, you know, you know, evidence of uh, people attending things, opening emails, you know, watching things, uh, then of course, giving feedback or narrative about the, the changes that they were making. And they realized not only did they have now a much more higher engagement to learning, but they were, they were actually hitting all the managers where previously a two day program, you only ever have what a couple of hundred, if that, every year go through the learning and they had thousands of managers. So I think that's a really nice example of how do you build something up over time, minimal viable product, you know, build it at the problems, at the source of the problem and then start to, to grow. Um, so that's one example. Another one is uh, a team I've worked with for a number of years and they've been on that journey that you talked about. And so we started with um, just introducing design thinking, you know, getting this idea of how do you understand the problem to solve? How do you test something in a really basic way? And we're talking cardboard cutouts, you know, sit down with employees, see if something's going to work for them or not before you start to design it. And so we have got some energy around that. And then, but we realized that this functional way of working, you know, L&D team, reward team, et cetera, was just always causing these blockers. So then we went, all right, um, what's the next phase? So the next we brought in this kind of cycle. So on a monthly basis, could we try and visualize our work, then commit to what's the most important things to work on, go and get some work done, then review the work at the end. So like showcases, looking at actual work that you're producing, and then do a retro as, as a team. So how are we working? What's going well? What isn't? And kind of just bring in this cycle. So we brought that in across the whole function. And then that brought out that to be able to prioritize better, to be able to solve problems better, you ultimately needed to restructure. And so their end, you know, where they are quite recently is that they now have changed their operating model. So they now are four areas. So you've got um, strategy, you've got people products. So this is just 
multi-skilled uh, group of people solving problems as they arise. So, you know, project, project basis. So it could be career, it could be reward, it could be anything. Um, and then uh, people operations and people essentials. And um, so it's a fascinating. And so it's basically, that's a kind of product design model, uh, similar that you might see in a business. Um, that's taken, I don't know, three, four years. So it's not something you do over, you know, and you don't jump straight to the restructuring. Um, but it's a really great example of showing how you start to build up practices over time to then get to this new model that makes sense based on what you're needing to deliver to the business. Um, so yeah, so that's two examples that we can talk a bit more about in the session. Well, I have so many questions that we're going to struggle to limit this to 25 minutes, but I'll do my best. Um, so just, I guess, just a couple of things there, because obviously this is really challenging so many aspects of like, you know, real sort of sacred cows of the organization mm. are being, um, and I guess how, if you're an HR manager or an HR director, how do you, and, and you, you can see what agile HR can achieve. How do you kind of get the informed consent of your people to, to really get them to buy in, to understand what this new world you're inviting them to embrace and all the things they've ever trained on and how they do things is about to be thrown up in the air potentially. How, how do you go about doing that? Yeah. So I think, so there's a couple of things there. One is, I think you got, I, I like to, I don't think it's that you're throwing everything away. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing all the capability that we have up until now. And now we're, we're kind of adding to it with, we're, we're strengthening it. So um, for example, you know, if you're an L and D practitioner, you bring so much skills to the table. However, this is also saying, okay, I now need to also be a good um, consultant, or I also need to have a bit of data analytics. I also, so this idea of kind of, developing your t-shape that I call and we can talk about that in the session um so I I like to you know how do we talk about how this is actually modernizing people's careers um because being able to experiment test test something understand the data you know uh, run the project in this way is actually vital business skills going forward so I think there's something about how do we show it that it's about growth and not just getting rid of what we've done so far. The second thing is challenging, um, well, how's that working out for you? Because if this is the thing, so if our current ways of working are causing people to feel overworked, um, too many things on their to-do list, um, you know, multiple things, uh, everything's prioritized, important and urgent and must be done tomorrow. Um, everyone's trying to get projects done, but they feel like there's no capacity to get them done. If that's what's going on, and that's all that's what I'm talking to when I speak to all the HR leaders um, that I work with, then there's a reason to do something. Um, and so for me, it's about linking it to the problems that you're trying to solve. So if you're wanting to build a more holistic employee experience, or you're wanting to discover moments that matter and start to build solutions at that point, or you're overworked and you know you've got no capacity to get things done and you really need to start to ruthlessly prioritize and understand value then this is going to help you so it's if we link it back to the things that people are feeling day to day and we show them that this can help them solve that then that's generally the way to go forward and usually if you do it that way people are like yeah i cuz they want everyone and it's the same as the business if you present oh, the reason we should run this project is in, you don't even have to use the term agile, is that we want to work in a more data-driven way. We want to kind of, you know, clearly define the problem to solve and actually validate that before we implement the solution. Are you happy for us to do that? Usually people go, yes, definitely. And if it's a problem that they think is important to solve, they usually give a lot of time and energy to be part of it. So um, that's the thing. Get into what are we trying to do with it rather than just the thing in itself? And usually you can really build a lot of commitment and energy around it. Great. No, th and thanks for clarifying that as well. I, um, and I guess, is it that it doesn't necessarily have to be a big bang beginning to something like Agile HR? You can sort of start where you start and build out from there. Definitely. And actually, I wouldn't recommend it to be a big bang um, because that's the opposite to Agile, isn't it? So actually start small. Um uh, see it as an experiment, um, but actually, you know, give the space to for things to not work and um, and make sure it's safe, you know. So 
Um, you know, one of the, the common ways of starting is choose a nice, juicy, complex problem that's maybe been kicking around for a while that you've tried to solve it in the past and it hasn't worked. Form a multi-skilled team and give them three months, but give them the space and the capacity. So don't say, oh, this is on top of, you know, everything else, you know, no, you've got, you know, 50% or 70% of your time is going to be that you can solve this as a team um, using these techniques and then see how that goes. And usually any team that tries that sees such great results, such energy also from working in those new collaborative ways that they're already trying to think, okay, how do we now widen this and, and start to grow it across the function or the organization? Um, so that's often the best way to start. Mm. And I guess one, one of the things I'm sort of really enjoying about the, the sort of the, the methodology as well is that it's the whole sort of data driven evidence based. It, it seems to have a sort of a real rigor behind it as well. Um, and I guess that's kind of using the language that like the top table really wants to hear. So you're presenting a very compelling business case. So, so I guess yeah. that does help give you like permission to proceed almost, doesn't it? Permission to play is my new um, phrase, actually. Um, so uh, how do you get the permission to play? And um, uh, uh, exactly that. So a, a good friend of mine who started on this journey uh, many years ago as well, she said, I, I, I was at, I was, you know, I'm on, I'm on the senior executive ta table and I'm getting all these opinions of, oh, we should do this with careers or this with reward. And I didn't have the data to back up why we should, you know, no, that's not a good idea, but this is. So she said, I needed to get a better way of working to get the evidence to present back to the hippo, the highest paid person's opinion um, of why something works and something doesn't and why we should commit you know, a lot of time and energy and money to an organizational change, because let's be honest, these, these are big, we try and change mm. behaviors. And, you know, we shouldn't underestimate the work that HR do. Um, but if you're going to go out and, you know, say, okay, here's a new way of doing hybrid working, you need some evidence that this is the right way to go. So exactly that, it's actually about managing risk. So agile, if done well, is very disciplined, is actually a way of managing risk, because rather than, you know, doing the whole plan up front and estimating when you have the least amount of evidence on a on a project and then, you know, implementing <laughs> everything at the end. The yeah. idea is you start, you you go, okay, I've got a vision, I've got a, a roadmap and we're, this is the goal, but how do we keep gathering evidence in shorter cycles to know that this is definitely the direction to go? Um, and once you kind of get senior um, leaders to understand that aspect and to be honest, a lot of businesses are using this in the business as well now. So if you can speak that similar language, generally they're like, yep, excellent. Show me the data. You know, when's the next iteration? When's the next kind of um, release of value? Um, and they um, they understand that way of working. Yeah. Great. No, thank you. And I guess sort of last question for you. Um, it is a it's a it's a field. There's there's lots of different as I said practices to develop and kind of getting an understanding of the agile principles. Um, obviously, you've got a book out which um, agile HR, which we'll add in the comments below that you've got to see it and, and very strategically placed there, which is great. I have a copy. I've really enjoyed reading it actually. Um, what would you say are sort of the, the the good places to begin when you start your very first steps into agile HR to to give you the confidence to move forward and iterate? Sure. So you should definitely come to a CIPD session um, and explore that um, uh, with me and you uh, in uh, the date that's underneath here. Um, uh, so definitely one of the best ways is to actually get it get a group or get a get your team um, or a few people in the organization and start looking at, well, what are the things that we need to solve? And then um, like some people have literally gone, okay, we need to, you know, deliver faster. We need a better evidence-based way of working and, you know, cup, you know, we need to modernize our practices. Okay. And they literally got the book out and started to go, all right, so this week, why don't we, why don't we, tr we try this? So you, it can be that, that simple, um, but definitely come along to PXO Culture. So we do a lot of free meetups um, and there's lots of resources um, that we provide that people can access. Um, and that's actually the best way to do it is to start hearing case studies and examples and then go, all right, what if I go and take that one 
you know, example or that one kind of tool and I take it back and I give that a go and, and see it as a, as a little agile experiment each time. So, okay, for three months, I'm going to use some design thinking or I'm going to kind of research my problem to solve in this particular way um, uh, for three months and just see what, what happens and see the outcomes that you get. And then you can kind of bring in another tool or another technique. So that's, yeah, piece by piece. Uh, slice of value by slice of value. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much. And, and thank you for your time today. Um, so Natalia is going to be running a session for us. Um, the event will be available on our CIPD Central London Eventbrite page. As I said, the, the tickets are free. So it's a really amazing opportunity to um, just hear from uh, Natal directly. You can ask your own questions about your own organisation and be greedy and hopefully share it as well. Um, as I said, there'll be, we'll share a link to Natal's book in the comments below and also to the PXO community as well. So you can actually start to engage with that and also meet with other like-minded HR people that are on the same journey as you. I think it sounds like there's a community that sort of pays it forward as well which is great so a huge thank you um it's gonna be a really exciting session it's gonna be really practical and insightful as well so so thank you so much for making time for this and we'll hopefully see everyone there so thank you